Okay, this sermon's entitled Saved. It has a D at the end of it. That means saved means it's done. It's over with. Once saved, always saved. And this is important. All right, dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon and to get into your word and to explain what it says. I just pray that you'll allow me to go over the proper verses that make this clear. That once a person is saved, you know, your work on the cross has been accomplished. And then there's no losing salvation. Keep us safe. Bless us abundantly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, in 2 Peter chapter 1, Jesus Christ is, is is called the Savior. He's called the Savior all throughout you know the New Testament. But, but let's focus on verse 11. It says, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, I want people to know right now, if they trusted Christ to save them, they believed on Christ to save them, they're saved and, and they're eternally secure. And because... Jesus Christ paid for all their sins. Every last sin they, they, they've committed and every sin they're going to commit. It's all been paid for. Okay? And that's the way it is. So let's turn back and look at a couple verses that talk about this. Saved has a D at the end of it. That means it's over with. It's past tense. Okay? And people don't get this. I'm talking to people. They're talking about losing salvation. I'm like, you can't lose salvation. It's God who saves. How can you lose something God does? It doesn't make any sense. It's, it's a lie. And yes, I should get a little ticked off about this. Okay? Because the Bible says you're saved and secure forever. Okay? Now, why on earth, would what, what right does a person have to sit there and say you can lose that? You can lose your salvation. It's ridiculous. Okay? For therefore, we both labor and suffer reproach because we trust in the living God who is the Savior of all men. Savior, capital S. Especially those that believe. You believe on Christ, you're saved. Period. He died for your sins. He was buried and rose again. That's why he can. That's why he saves you because he paid it all. Okay. Look at First Timothy chapter one, verse uh, sixteen. Look at verse fifteen. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Christ Jesus came into the world to save who? Sinners. That's right. Not good people. Because nobody's good. There is none righteous, no, not one. We're all sinners. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Hey, Jesus Christ came to save sinners, but God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. For scarcely for a righteous man would, would, would one die, yet peradventure for a good man would some even dare to die. But God commended his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. I already said that, and I'm going to keep saying it, and I'm going to keep saying it, and keep telling people he died for sinners. Okay? Do you believe on Christ? If the answer is yes, you understand you're a sinner, you're saved. Because he died for sinners. He didn't die for his own sake because he was sinless. Hebrews 4.15. Uh, but now let's take a look at the word saved in the, in the scripture. Let's start off with 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But unto us which are saved, D at the end, okay, saved, it is the power of God. clear and people don't get this okay they want to believe you can lose salvation it's madness it's re it's blasphemy to believe that to teach that and to think that okay because jesus christ is the savior when when he say he saves you he doesn't mess up with it turn to hebrews chapter six jesus christ died one time you only have to be saved one time you only have to believe on him one time period and i don't care what anyone anyone says this is what the Bible says. Hebrews chapter 6, it says he died no more. Okay? Look, look at verse 9. Knowing that Christ, being raised from the dead, dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died unto sin once. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. He died. Hey, he died one time. Okay? It is finished, the Bible says. Now turn to John chapter 3. The reason why I'm preaching this sermon is because I'm, I deal with people all the time that, that think you can lose your salvation. I'm talking to this lady the other day, she said, yeah, I think you can lose it. Well, stop thinking and start reading the Bible and give me a verse and just believe what the Bible says and stop thinking. See, the problem is the devil gets into your head, the devil gets into your thoughts and your mind and says, hey, you can lose it. But see, that's a lie. You can't lose salvation because Jesus Christ, look at this. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. S-A-V-E-D. Can't lose it. Because it's done. It's, it's saved. Past tense. It's not the world through him might. 
you know, eventually be saved. No, it's saved. Saved. It's all now, I say that saved is a, is a, you know, the word saved is in the past tense. Past tense. Think about it. Okay? Save. Saving. Saved. But, you know, we gain salvation. We, we, we get eternal life the moment we believe on Christ. It's not, we get it when we die. No, we get it right, we get it right now. We get it eternal life right now in this lifetime. The moment we believe on Christ, we get eternal life at that moment. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life, but the wrath of God abideth on him. So that's all I have. This is, this is a very clear teaching. And people are, I've heard people say, well, you're just giving a couple verses. Hey, and what they, you say, they say you got to compare other verses. You can't just go by it. What do these verses mean? Okay, the people who say that. You know what? These verses are, are as true as any other verse in the Bible. And they, they say that you have eternal life, you're saved, it's done, and you're eternally secure. And that's what the Bible teaches. <clears throat> and you know, people that want to blaspheme this, whatever, they, whatever. I mean, look at here's another verse that proves this. I'm going to close in prayer. John chapter four, verse thirty-four. Jesus saith unto them, My meat is to do the will of Him that sent me, and to finish His work. It's finished. Salvation's complete. It's finished. Okay, God finished it. Jesus Christ finished it. It was God's will for Jesus Christ to die for our sins. To be buried and then, raised, then raised, and be raised again. He finished the work. Okay? That's it. All we have to do is believe on him. And then we, once, once we do that, he saves us forever. And then we're eternally secure. And that's what the Bible teaches. And that's found all over the place. I just gave you a couple. Ver I mean, I didn't even heard, I gave you just a few verses that, that prove this. There's so many more verses on this. It's not even funny. But that's all I have. We're running out. You know, I've got some stuff to do. So let me just go ahead and close in prayer. I got some more sermons to, to put up, more stuff to prepare for. But let me give you let me just give you one last verse to, to make this point crystal clear. John chapter, let's see. Let's just go to John chapter 10. I am the door. Okay, the sermon's entitled Saved has a D at the end of it, so let me give you one last verse on this. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. See that? There it is again. And shall go in and out and find pasture. Our right, dear God, thank you for allowing me to preach this sermon. It's really sad that people don't want to accept the fact that their salvation's already been paid for. It's paid for at the cross. We can't do anything to mess that up. No sin we can commit is, was not paid for. And no sin we can commit did you not know about when you when you sent your son to die you know, on the cross for our sins. He died for them all. The Bible's clear on that subject. And once we're saved, we're out. We're always saved. It's very clear. And people don't believe this, but I, it's, what you, it's what your word says. Keep us safe. Allow us to just take hold of this truth. Bless us abundantly and help us to grow in grace and in our knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask all this in his precious name. Amen.